This is Katie Hopkins like you've never seen her before. And in a brand new format, a full review of the major events of the year. The year of cancel culture. Tate, uh, we saw him taken down and eviscerated. The day comes where, where the powerful that run uh, the world decide that you need to go. Russell Brand, do you think he's guilty of the accusations? Yeah. Every single time they come up with accusations. Cash is freedom and that's rebellion and thank God. The, the illusion of law and order. Mm. What police been used for most recently? To crush rebellion. And then we have this implosion of the entire monarchy. Uh, I think Meghan Markle was a very useful way of kind of destroying that. So this is something very different. I'm at Katie Hopkins' house. Am I allowed to say that? Yes. Yeah. We're privately hidden <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. No one ever comes to my house. Well, so you're privileged. I am privileged. So Katie had this idea we could do a review of the year. Yes. Which I thought was a brilliant idea. Um, so we're going to do a review of the year with Katie Hopkins. But first, Katie, I need to ask you this. Do you feel like you're misunderstood? <laughs> no, no, I don't feel like I'm misunderstood. I feel like I've always said what I think. I think people have misunderstood what it means to have an opinion. And many people have misunderstood that if you disagree with someone, you have to hate them. And that's a misunderstanding that they have. Whereas I understand that I can say exactly what I think. And as long as I'm not demanding anyone agrees with it, thinks the same as me, I'm not asking to be liked either, but uh, I think that's okay. And that we need to be able to say what we think and disagree and that be okay. I think the misunderstanding is that you have to hate someone that you disagree with. So you're okay if people think, for example, you're a racist? Yeah, I'm okay if people think I'm racist, fattist, uh, sexist, Islamophobic, uh, anti-Christian, anti-Jew, anti-Semitic, all of the names wow, I've been called. you managed to get them all in there. Well, I've tried to, get, I've tried to hit every religion. Because <laughs> I've been called all of them. People right. think I am Jewish. Uh, I'm not, wouldn't matter if I was. Mm. Um, so I'm called every label that there is. And I will always say, you know, you have to allow, it's a really important thing, I think, for young people, like with post-it notes, I wish I had them on me. But um, you have to allow people to put labels on you and allow them to sit there. But does that not upset you if that's not who you think you are? No, because it, maybe it did for five or years or so of it <laughs> to start with. But after a while, you realise the, the people are going to keep sticking these labels on and then they'll make room for another one. Oh, she's transphobic. Oh, she's now queer ally transphobic. They'll just keep coming up with more labels, even if you answer these ones. Mm -hmm. So all you can do is know that those people are putting labels on you, but that's not who you are. And as long as you know who you are, everything's good. And, and it's kind of a message I have, I guess, for younger people is whatever you get called, just know that that's someone putting that on you. It's your choice as to whether that is actually sticking and it's a truth or you know who you are and that's OK. Mm. So who is Katie Hopkins? <laughs> oh, you know what? Um, someone that wants people to be all right. Someone that wants everyone to be all right, wh whatever they're doing. Someone who wants people to make it through this craziness that we're living in. Someone that knows that things can get so dark you see no way out other than ending it. Uh, someone that wants everyone to do, be as bloody weird as you can be. Because my view is the only way we're going to make it through this is by being weird. And um, be as weird as you want and you go do your thing. And I will cheer you and I will cheer you and I will cheer you. Just don't ask me to pay for your crap, believe the same crap that you believe, or in any way change my views to try and fit with what you want me to be, because mm. I won't. Mm. Do you think you become more or less hated? Yeah, it's an odd thing. I was hated for so long, I was completely used to being hated. So it was entirely standard for me to be hated. Uh, I never really got attacked in the street and things because people don't typically do that, but I was absolutely hated. So I, and because of being hated, it means all sorts of things can come for you. Uh, people came for my jobs, came for my children. None of my children have my last names to try mm. and protect them. Mm. I've never been to any of my children's schools, not one day in their lives. 
um, I don't own anything, I don't have anything, so that if someone comes for me, it's just me and it doesn't impact on my family. So it's that level of hate that gets to quite a point. Um, and I can't be booked on anything, I'm banned from all mainstream, I'm, I'm utterly hated. And then a really strange thing has happened in probably the last couple of years, is that because the world was so confusing and has been so mad and, and people are fickle and disloyal and inconsistent, I have been consistently me and a, and a strange thing has gone on where I now have people that support me and outwardly love what I do. And that's been very awkward for me to deal with indeed, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> I st <laughs> what, because you're always waiting for them to turn on No, you. no, not that. No, um, not at all. Just I became very used to having to rely on I know who I am. Uh, good people that know me, maybe three people, know who I am. And I accept that everyone else hates me. And now uh, I have thousands of people turning up at events and they are supportive. And I find it very awkward clapping or anything I, I still really struggle with. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not that yeah. I like being hated I'm just pretty good at it now right and so any moments so where it hasn't been the case I've found incredibly awkward is that what you're sort of almost in institutionalized for the world to hate you and it's just hard to undo it hard to undo it and also I don't feel I didn't come out I didn't ever just start speaking my mind in order to be, oh, here I am. Everybody will love this. I want to be loved. It wasn't. I just always saw things that weren't right and would always say what I thought was right. And now I have a lot of support and it's, and it's a very nice thing. Hmm. So here's a question for you. Would you go back to the start <laughs> before the hate <laughs> and repress your opinion oh. so that you could watch your kids at their school plays, take them to school, they could have your last name, not have people come for your properties, your bank accounts and everything. Would you change that destiny if you could? Oh, I thought you were going to ask if you could have all of that life again, you know, because life is finite and it's ticking away. If you could go back to the start and live it all again, would you? 100% no. <laughs> it's been exhausting. Right. Like I, if, I, if someone said to me, right, tomorrow you're gonna wake up and you get to live every day that you've lived, you live it all again, I'd be like, sod off. Like, give me a Mars bar and sod off. <laughs> no way. But, would I, knowing all that I know about the dastardliness of what I've brought on myself, often because of my mighty mouth, would I change a thing? Do you know I wouldn't? So you would not <sighs> repress your opinion, even to be able to see your kids at school growing up? No, because A, I don't like my kids that much, and B... Uh, I shouldn't encourage you, should I? <laughs> just, <laughs> just do cutaways if we go like this. <laughs> but truly, Kids are really overrated. You've got some, haven't you? Two. Yeah, so you understand. It's like this idea that you have kids and you're supposed to go, oh, isn't this great? Like people say to you, oh, don't you feel now that your life is complete? N nah, <laughs> my life was pretty good before. Like kids are like quite nice to have, I guess, but like not at all my life. No way. I'd lie down in front of a bus for any of them tomorrow. That's not the point. It's that I had school gate mums. I would rather stab myself in the face with a blunt butter knife than spend any time with school gate mums. Uh, parents committee, uh, bake sale, uh, like no. So the fact that I couldn't have my children's name and that I couldn't go to their schools, there's been some Brucey bonuses with that. Let's not get carried away. Um, also, all these people that have their kids living with them still at 22, 24, I consider that to be a failure of parenting. Like get those kids, get them gone. Adult swans, when their babies have grown up, the cygnets, hmm? learning moment there, baby swan, Thanks. cygnet. Hmm? Glad I drove all the way down for this. You're in property, you might not <laughs> yeah. know that. You don't come from the countryside like me. There comes a day where both the adult swans turn around and attack the cygnets, like full on attack them so that they fly away and find their own space. And I've taken Is that, that. what you did to your kids? Yeah, <laughs> that's made... why they're not here. Yeah. <laughs> but my point is, um, that I wouldn't change anything because actually my life, as it turned out, I've been the same person all the way through. And now 
I feel like the world has turned 180 degrees. And so suddenly now I have this huge support, not of people that like me necessarily, but people that are willing to see that we don't have to agree. And then everything seems to be going in the direction of the kind of travel I wanted us to be going in. Mm. Freeing up of speech, freeing up of people's opinions, uh, push back against the madness. I feel like I'm on a massive, things have come good. 20 mm. years it took, that's all. Rob.team is my digital financial freedom platform where you can learn, earn, invest, start and scale a business and make, manage and multiply money. There are hundreds of hours of courses, resources, masterclasses you can join right now. It's all on the other side, I'll see you there. So in our review of the year, yes. from what you said about freedom of speech, that's where I want to start. So some things happened. So Andrew Tate got arrested and imprisoned and then freed and stage by stage he's getting more freed. Um, he can now Rome or Romania. Um, and, and so maybe he's only one step away from freedom. So it, it both happened. And of course, he became pretty much the biggest name in the world. Then we had Russell Brand. And, um, you know, that was trial by social media. Is he a predator or has he been cancelled? We don't know. So do you want to talk about the year of cancel culture and the f free speech and what your thoughts are on famous people like this. Mm. It was kind of a, it became a theme, didn't it? One after the other, mm. they came for the big guys. Certainly Tate, uh, we saw him taken down and eviscerated. And I, what I love about uh, Tate is that he walked towards that fire, always walked towards it. You know, a lot of the time when I'm signing stuff off or speaking to, onwards towards, we walk towards them. And if anyone walked toward them, it was Andrew Tate, like, mm. come on. Come on. And even when, so the last thing I think was the Greta thing, when he when he went for their golden child, mm. Greta, and he went, here's my cars, basically, you know, here's my knob. Mm. And I was like, yes. So he walked towards it and paid a price. But ultimately, you know, I believe our paths are already set. I believe uh, good always wins out. So I always believe he's going to be OK. And it's, so it's proving. Um, and he has more support than he's ever had. Mm. And that's something that unites all of these individuals in the review of 2023 is their support grows and magnifies. And what the left keeps doing is creating these monsters. You know, they are Frankenstein. Tate is their monster. And the monster's getting bigger and more powerful because of what they did to him. Uh, just quickly on that yeah. one before we move on to someone else, because I remember watching an interview with you where you said you knew exactly what had happened to Andrew Tate because yeah. it had happened to you. Yeah, 100%. So could you tell us what exactly happened? Yes. So once the day, they've got their eye on you and you see signs of it in all different places, my daughter's bank account being cancelled. I mean, uh, strange things happening. You're getting refused for insurance, life insurance, uh, just things that flag up as being a bit odd or your driving license being sent back to you cancelled starting to pull away at things that you don't know why your name ever happened that way but a day comes where where the powerful that run uh, the world decide that you need to go one of these days you're going to need to just yawn when you do a yawn you just need to do a yawn okay just do this oh is that an instruction for me to do yeah. it yeah that's better yeah, don't hide your yawns. Okay. Because it makes me feel like you've got some sort of cerebral palsy and it's putting me off. So, You're supposed to be a professional. You've done no, this a I long time. No, I am being professional because I'm not yawning. Right. You're yawning. You but just you're made just me to hide it. No, but, but you just made me But yawn. you're hiding your yawns and you're going like this and it's putting me off. <laughs> but you're supposed to be a professional. I am the professional, hence I ate and drank this morning so I'm firing on all cylinders. Okay, got I'd, it. I wouldn't yawn at you because I don't find you no. boring. Um... So the thing, should we try going from somewhere that was useful to you? <laughs> no, I think I'm, we're going to keep all this in, by I'm the fine. way. You do know it five hours. <laughs> you do know. You do know I haven't been on coffee for a month. I know what it shows, because yeah. you're yawning your belly head off, I'm, but you're not even I doing I wasn't even going yawn. to yawn. You what, I've seen you do it about twice now, and you do that weird thing people do where you go, like that. So it's really off-putting for me, because all my brain wants to go, just yawn, go on, just yawn. But I didn't even need to yawn. You so did. Don't be a child. <laughs> with me um yeah when the world descends yeah. so you see these you see these 
things happening and you think that's odd that's odd and then all of a sudden one day they decide and for me it was when I was in uh, on in the med um, some a brilliant bunch of people had got a boat and they were going to try and block the illegals being ferried over from Africa they were in the middle of the med trying to block those boats I was on the side of the med with the Save the Children boat and I'm literally at the Save the Children boat. The head of Save the Children is on the phone to my editor. I am causing a world of pain to everybody that traffics flesh across the med. And that's the day. And I saw it come in. My editor did not know what was going on. And believe me, he's seen all things. Uh, the chief rabbi, uh, the board of deputies, that's the organisation that runs the Jewish synagogues, uh, the Muslim council, they were into my editor, uh, calling for my removal, calling for my silencing, calling for my job. Uh, Brandon Cox saved the children. He was in. And there were some other figures, notable figures, all on the same day. At the same time. At the same time, a board of deputies, 100 signatures for why Katie Hopkins has to be gone. Muslim Council, 250. Leading academics from the university. They've got it all ready to go. And they work as a circle. Uh, they are watching you. And one day is the decision day and that day was the Greta tweet from Tate yeah because you saw it go boom. it all happened I think yeah. New Year's Eve yeah um really late it was that yeah. seemed very timely yeah. all banks all social media I mean, he said to me he had something like 15 million just couldn't get back yeah yeah um, and they've got it ready to go it, yeah. you can imagine them they've got it already circled around you and it's simply the day that they do that and they all do it together to, wow. absolutely together someone said to me they had someone else not Andrew but someone else they had bank account shut down like millions and they said I oh, will open it but you've got to give us half to open it <laughs> I mean it's like it's wild it, it is it's wild and then you realize you know so way back when I realized this well there's no such thing really as voting you know not in, not in our country and there's certainly no such thing as the law and that that what do you is mean a, by there's no such thing as voting and the law so, yes so so there's no such thing as the law um, yeah, I know Me, you just said Yeah, I know, it I was going to say, if yeah. I say it twice, will it help? Yeah, yeah, that's more impact. If I go for a third time. Say it again and we'll all just understand what you mean. So there's no such thing as the law. So people say, well, why don't you sue? Why don't you, well, surely there's a, you know, can't you get a lawyer? But there's no such thing as the law working with you or there's no standard of the law. Whatever the law, the law is whatever those powerful people decide it will be on the day. So if they need to create a new law just for me that says, for this reason, we're taking your house. That's what they did. Mm -hmm. Or for Tommy, for this reason, da -da 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 -da, we're going to lock you up for contempt of court. Never happened before, never in history, never will again, just for Tommy. Right. And for Andrew, a law just for Andrew that says whatever nonsense. Mm. So the law is not the law. And that's why sometimes when people are saying, well, can't you litigate? Can't you go to the lawyers? You're like... You're, there's still a very long way behind the curve. Mm. Not not in a disrespectful way, because it's much it's much uh, preferable to believe in things like the law. Mm. It's comforting to imagine the police are there to protect you. Mm. And then Russell Brand. Russell Brand was next. And I guess for him, this is a 180 world. He's kind of did a 180 to being on this amazing kind of journey of, of the same, walking towards it, knowing he was going to lose all the stuff from his old world because he was very much a pet or a, a beloved of the left. He was the intelligentsia loved him. You know, zone ones to three in London, Chelsea, Knightsbridge. Oh, Russell. Oh, let's go and see Russell. You know, he broke into my LBC radio studio to call me a witch and a Nazi and the rest of it. And then now I listen to Russell and I'm like, Preach, you know, we, we ended up on the same thing. It's a re really, really lovely thing. Mm. And I love it the best when we bring them over from the other side. So Neil Oliver was a good example because they loved him when he was stood on the coast, like stood on the coastline with his accent talking about the coast. They were like, oh, we love him. And then he came over to our side and they're like, we hate him. Same with Russell. Mm. Um, so he's been joyous to bring over and to see him doing so well. Do you but, think he's guilty of the accusations? No, every single time uh, they come up with accusations, every single time. You know, we've just seen it in, in smaller ways as well. We've just seen it. So Marine Le Pen 
is due to win next year in France and now they have some kind of investigation to her expenses. Rosie Duffield of the Labour Party, they don't want her in the party anymore. Anti-Semitism investigation. Uh, the Green Party women have just been disenfranchised because of technical issues. There's always a reason, but it's never the reason. Right. Yeah, so no, I'm, um, I think it's terrific what Russell's done. I'm so supportive of him, but I, I fear he will never return to being able to do stand-up in theatres. Theatres that he used to be booked in will never have him. Mm. But does that matter so much now with social media and the internet and he's on yes. Rumble and... Who cares about these things? You know, the social online is not where we're headed, in fact. Uh, we're headed back to gatherings uh, in public, in person human beings mm. in the same room. Didn't Why you, aren't we on just, Zoom? Yeah, didn't you just do that in America? Yes, yeah. and um, for t four months in the UK, gathering people in rooms, yeah. speakeasies in the dead of night, in places that you shouldn't gather, <laughs> and also big theatres, mm. 2,000 people in Blackpool on the end of the pier, gathering people, and that's actually the direction of travel now. What, as in you think that's what humans want yeah, again, yes. connection. It's why you've come Energy. here. Yeah, we can't do this. Like Zoom. No. We can't Zoom this. No. And even if we tried to Zoom it, we would both hate it so much yeah. we wouldn't want to do it. No. And when people ask me about Zoom, I say, you know, stick Zoom up your ass. And that seems impolite, but I mean it. Mm. This notion that you can meet someone online is a, is a lie. Yeah. And humans have such a thirst now to be together that as much as Russell has built a very successful Rumble platform, I'm sure, and as much as I'm so grateful to Elon for bringing me back to Twitter, on social media is, is in its end days. People are bored of it. It's over. It's done that way. We need people. We're hungry for people. Mm. And, so, and that's what I find as I go up and down the road and on the road in America. Mm. So summarise then where you think we're at with our freedom of speech and cancel culture. We are fighting back now in a meaningful way. I feel like I've been on it for 15 years through the silencing, uh, but I think with Elon Musk being able to wield his mighty weapon in the way that he has, has been beyond hot. We'll come back to that. And oh, we've got a whole God. section on Elon have Musk. We got, have yeah. we? We can yeah. do more. Yeah. I am 100% willing to blow Elon. you need me to leave Elon. you alone? <laughs> yeah, I just, there's things that go on with me and Elon that have definitely helped my marriage. I'm just gonna say, but, um, so, so attractive. But I just love the direction of travel now. People coming back. Alex Jones just came back. Mm -hmm. A sense of uh, Farage did a great job highlighting the banking nonsense. Uh, and I guess personally, I've been so, it's so cheesy to say humbled, but I've been made to feel very, very tiny by venue owners that have said, you know what, we stand for free speech, we won't cancel Katie, and have stood firm. And that's been a, an amazing thing mm. for me. Yeah, actually this side, I know we're, we're portrayed by mainstream as being <laughs> conspiracy theorists, not as, there's just like a handful of them. There's just Russell, oh, there's just Andrew Tate, oh, oh, there's just the billionaire Elon. Oh, there's just, oh, actually, there's Tucker, there's, Dun there's a good 20 million British people who are right with, any of us at given mm. points. So it's an exciting time. It hasn't got worse. People just are starting to realise because of lockdowns and the nonsense and they're seeing this stuff. Yeah. And the internet ha helped that. And that's why what we're seeing now is this pulling back of freedoms that you know you had. They're, they're being taken. Mm. And that's the other reason you're aware of it. So like if you've got kids and you see your 18 year old being asked for four and a half grand for insurance for a car, you know what they're coming for, which is young people's right to drive. Mm. You see what all these different ways that we're being made smaller. And that wasn't the way back in the 70s where I'm sure you weren't around, we felt like life was to be made bigger and freer and naughtier. Mm. There's not enough naughty now either. No, no, I'd agree. And do you think this is just the natural order of empires that grow and then empires that fall? I study a little bit of history and I think, God, this is a terrible time, but there were much worse times in the past. Empires rise and empires fall. Mm. Is, it, is it just the natural order? Yeah, it sort of is. It's, this it's like a part of the cycle, cycle of the natural order. Yeah, it's that individuals had so much freedom 
like peak freedom, 60s, 70s, yeah. I don't know. But too much freedom is bad. Is it? Well, sh yeah, I mean, if, if everyone was free to do whatever they want, we'd go back to the 1200s. Well, there's some basic... And they'd be like, oh, well, I'll just come and burn your village down and rape all your women and steal all your farm animals. Yeah, well, you need some... It's like a pretty good day out. <laughs> um, I think there was, a, there was a peak freedom, right, which is the American Constitution, which I could put my hands on in about three seconds in this house because mm. uh, I, I love it, I live it and I eat it, which is there's three things the government are allowed to interfere with you about. One is to protect your right to life. So if I came and I was trying to kill you, mm. which could happen, you would have a right to be preserved. The second is your right to liberties, your right to bear arms, your right to live your life, how you to work, to keep your family together. And the third thing is your pursuit of happiness. The, uh, the government's third reason for being... Oh, that's been fucking to, forgotten, hasn't it? Right. It's the suppression of happiness. Right, right. So the constitution of the American, well, the Republic, mm. right, was the moment of the pinnacle of people's freedom. Right. And since then... That was the start of the end then. Yeah, it's been about taking away, yeah. pull it back, pull it back. And, and, but it will come back again because it's starting. Yeah. We're at the start of the, the freedom thing. Rebellion. Been, yeah, I can, I can, I can smell rebellion. Yes, look at yeah. you. I knew we would get you into this space. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't mind saying this on record. I don't say a lot of things on record. I let my guests do it and people take the post-it notes off my guests and stick them on me. But if they're going to try and lock us down again on some tenuous evidence, fuck off. No, I will keep running my business and serving my clients and paying my staff and fuck off. <laughs> That's how I feel because they fucked us so badly last time. It's quite hot. When you <laughs> Sorry. There's tones of Elon Musk <laughs> taking me back to some very excitable places. Well, we're going to take a break halfway through so you can... Well, I might just get that clip that you just made there and just watch right, it then, quietly sure. naked and play with my own nipples. <laughs> to do what you need to do. It's quite exciting. It's whatever you need to do. Well, that will be what I need to do. All right. Shall we move on to Prince Harry then, just to um, change the tone down? <laughs> so Prince Harry releases Spare. We have the coronation and we have this like almost implosion of the entire monarchy the great institution of the UK. And it's like, all of a sudden, everything is just exposed. What are your thoughts? Mm. You know, it's like things people can believe in. One of the ways that you get a, a population to rip itself apart is remove things that people had faith in. So some people may have had faith in the church and we've seen how you know mm. our churches are now architects offices, which really annoys me. Um, or you could rip apart things that they might believe in, like people may have been proud of their flag. So you make it that people can't fly the Union flag anymore, that a flag is kind of a racist symbol. I mean, imagine the flack you're going to get for sitting in front of part of the Union flag, just because it happens to be in my house. Um, and then the royal family. Now, for young people, it may have been meaningless anyway. You may be anti-monarchist, but for a large tranche of the population, the royal family was something they were proud of and believed in and believe in, uh, particularly in the time of uh, the Queen Mother and the Queen. And my family were always three o'clock on a Christmas day. Everybody has to be in front of the TV to listen to the Queen. That was always a tradition that my grandparents had and you weren't allowed to speak. That's just how it was. So it was just another thing people could believe in mm. and another thing that gets ripped apart. Uh, I think Meghan Markle was a very useful way of kind of destroying that. Obviously, in a modern era, what's the relevance? So when you say a useful monarchy? way, are you implying she's some kind of plant? I don't know that a plant, I just know that she was very, very well trained, both as an actress, even though you may say she's a crap actor, but she was a very useful fool. Uh, for helping destroy one of the loveliest things, which was the relationship between the two brothers. Mm. Meghan Markle, when she went on her first date, this is from my time at Mail Online, when I had access to things, um, Meghan Markle on her first date with Prince Harry wore Princess Diana's perfume, which if you're like an emotive wow. person that Fuck. remembers things with smells and remembers safety or security or the smell of home, 
Meghan Markle smelt like, like, like his mother on the first date. So she came along. I, really? 100%. Why would you do that? To, because Prince Harry was helpless in needing his mother. He's always needed his mother. And it just so happened that instead he got the trailer trash with the same perfume. Wow. What I love yeah. about, uh, and it's something about a resilience thing and about the post-it notes, is if you've anybody's seen recent, uh, and you may be an anti-monarchist and, and, you know... more. How do you feel about the monarchy? Is you... Oh, I, I think, um, I like that people like them. I like the elderly people gathered, like the respect, I thought, for the, for the Queen's funeral. I found it charming. And over time, why not allow people who loved the Queen and believed they had a relationship with her in a meaningful way, why not allow them to feel proud and to lie in the street and queue for days? What, what, I love that, that, that spine. That's meaning for people. And I accept many people don't agree but that's okay as well. Stay home. Um, I don't think you need to stand with a sign saying, not my king. Just just get out of the way mm. for a minute. Like I could get out of the way if I disagreed with something. Mm. Let people who need that have it. But what I really love is Kate Middleton. And people can say, oh, she's just posh and she's just useless and she just doesn't do anything. Look at the way she's rolling it now. Like if you looked at her for any of the latest outings, she is power. She comes out there all humble. She holds her hands just so. She has her little legs just so. Stuff I don't have any understanding about, like female stuff, like crazy. Um, but she, inside, I can see in her, she is like that. It's a Meghan Markle. Mm. Every time she steps out, she's basically doing that. But via, you know, Alexander McQueen and, you know, mm. Im immaculate everything. I love her for that. Like, powerful woman, mm, her. So that really, I guess I find the positive in things. Mm. So do you think um, the, the coronation of the king, mm. did that bring a bit of togetherness back with what had happened with the royal family? Do you mm. think the royal family is a, like any empire, a dying empire? Yeah, I think it's a dying... Golly, you're a bit tragic, aren't you? Die, well, mama. well, I mean, it, it, she, it, death is life, isn't it? Ooh. We're, we're, well, now you've gone back to the light. I don't know. No, but, but, OK, let me... Um, I have this theory that everything in the universe is either growing or dying. Nothing is staying the same. True. So we're Correct. either growing or we're dying. Mm -hmm. And the British Empire, I mean, you know, look at what it was. Obviously, there's some big downsides to how the empire went and claimed its land from other people but it was a strong powerful empire we had the global reserve currency now we've now our pounds worth fuck all our monarchy is probably a, a, a bit of a global joke um it's just a natural dying of an empire are you growing it? or dying um well i should i should think physically i'm certain areas i'm starting to die <laughs> in other areas i'm still growing <laughs> Um, what about in life? At the moment, I'm still growing. Yeah. Is it harder? Is life harder? Um, life's different. Yeah, I would say it's a bit harder because I found that the more I know, the more questions and scepticisms and noises and self-talk in my brain won't stop and I find actually I've become a bit more of an overthinker as I've got older the more information I've exposed myself to whether it's the world or or business and what I do and I do feel that I've maybe lost a little bit of my positivity my naive positivity that I had in my late 20s but that can also be good for business you don't get fucked over quite as much because you can't because I'm naturally quite trusting. I don't know if I like that about myself or not, though. But I think you can go from naive positivity in, in your youth to determined positivity in your haggard 
Wisdom leather, test. In, in, in our leather faces. In our later leather. days. Yeah. So like a determined positivity, which is like, so we're talking about the royal family. Mm. Okay, so sure that, you know, the end of times for the royal family is surely coming. Mm. They surely can't sustain past another generation. But in this moment, was it an uplift, the coronation? Mm, a, yes. In a particular moment in it that I, um, and in K Mid and the way she's just like, yeah. I l like that woman walking up the, what do you call it in a church? I was going to say gangway, the aisle of the church. <laughs> like. Walking up the gangway, what, it's not a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> With a, you know, just Holland Cooper trousers on. Mm, mm. Just, that is a look. So, so it's a determined positivity, if you see what I mean. Yeah. It's that we see what's coming, but there is so much positive that I now mm. feel. So that, and I think the coronation, the thing I loved about it um, was that the day that the Queen passed, King Charles became king. And within 12 hours, he had to start uh, going through English, Scottish, Welsh and Irish parliaments to do whatever the ceremonial mm. thing was, forgive me. But what an amazing thing to have been schooled all your life that that was your purpose. And within 12 hours of losing your mother, you are stood in parliaments reassuring the, na Ooh, gives me the shivers. Mm. reassuring mm. the nation. So you can be anti-monarchist, you can be anti-everything, you can be anti-me, but I, I very much like the sort of moral courage of that thing. Mm. And what about the Queen? Whether you like the monarchy or not, did you ever hear her complain? No. Never. When all the stuff was happening with her, Prince Andrew oh my God. and, you know, Harry, when did she once lose her, her, her yeah. aura? aura? Never. Unbreakable woman. And right at the end, when so everyone was gathered, weren't they, outside the balcony, and she'd gone in because she was in so much pain and she couldn't come out and and King and Charles went in evidently and said, I really think, Mummy, you should come one lot. And she made it out there. Mm. And people didn't know that within, what was it, eight days, she would be dead. Yeah. But she knew because she had to battle through. So, yeah, uh, you know, without kind of labouring it for those who are completely over the royal family. But you can, you can be over the royal family, and, but respect the Queen. And respect for, strength. Yeah, strength. So strength is what yeah. I, re I, and I respect it with the Queen and I respect it with what King Charles was able to do at the same time as he lost his mum mm. and I so respect it with Kate Middleton. Mm. Mm. Amen. <laughs> yeah. So, debanking. Oh. This has been a big theme of the year, hasn't it? For oh, all. you are a pep, a politically exposed person. We'll just shut your bank account down. And Farage was the big, I know Nigel really well, and they fucked with the wrong person there, I think. It was glorious. He, like, yeah. So what do you think about, de is debanking a thing? What do you think about it yeah. and Nigel Farage? Yeah, Nigel Farage did a tremendous thing because he took what could have been a private matter for him to resolve and be rewarded for resolving and whatever, and he made it super public. And of all the things I'm grateful for, I'm grateful that he had a platform on GB News to do it. I'm grateful that he just kept going. Like, the, they were like, okay, sorry. And he was like, nah, I want the papers. Mm. I'm showing the papers. And then it turned out that Simon Jack from the BBC, who I know and known for a long time, was the guy who was at a dinner with the head of the bank. And that's how that whole lie came about. And this is exactly how the world works. Is it at private dinners? Powerful people sit with each other, and this is actually how decisions and business and many of the things we see in the political realm are done. So Simon Jacks comes bowling out with the exclusive that it had nothing to do with Nigel Farage's politics and everything to do with the fact that he was cash-strapped. Um, Which is really damaging for someone's reputation to say that. Right, by the Simon way. Jack to be yeah. able to do that. And then he faced no consequences. He went on vacation, Simon Jack, for two weeks, and now he's back. And that boy still has escaped any of the harm that should have come his way as a direct consequence for him being a treacherous little snake. Mm. So I think Farage did a lovely job. And, I, and there are people who say, oh, well, it's all very well. When it's Farage, people want to hear. But when it was me, no one cared. But now they know because of Nigel. Exactly. Yeah. And that's totally my view. Is mm. I, I understand the um, upset of people who feel like, oh, well, no one gave a shit when it was me understand but thank the lord we now have barrage that exposed it mm. 
same with um, you know any of these others that have been out there. It's people say, oh, but it happened to me and no one cared. Get over yourself. Because as long as we have somebody speaking out, it's a great thing. So mm. Nigel did a great thing. The banks have had a shot across their bow. Dame What's Her Face doesn't get to take home her 10 million pound uh, golden handshake. Um, and I think he yet again did a real service and I'm pleased to see Nigel doing so well. And I certainly think he could, I certainly see him back in politics before too long. Do you think he'll be prime minister one day? Wouldn't it be so fun? <laughs> Gert Wilders in Holland. Uh, you're going to have Marine Le Pen in France. She's due to get in. So their elections, I believe, I want to say June 24. Mm. Uh, Spain and Italy have gone our way. Uh, Argentina has gone our way. And then you could very well end up with Farage. It wouldn't surprise me no. at all because people are at the point of having of of realizing so many things, they just want something that isn't what they've got. Mm. So um, I've been saying for years that people need to be careful with the banks and money. One because inflation really eats away at your money much quicker than you think. It's like having your money stashed and a rat literally eating it, nibbling it around the edges because inflation was in the double digits in 2020. So I've been saying to people, don't leave too much money in the banks, put it in other hard assets, gold, property, whatever. But this whole debanking thing should just warn people at any time your banks could go, nah, you're not having your money. And then they might never give you your money back. Or they might say, yeah, we'll unlock your banks now, but we want half. And then if we go to this central digital currency, they might go, well, we want a curfew tonight, so we'll lock all your banks so you can't go anywhere. We don't want you to leave the country, so we'll track every financial move. And one, one of the things I'm really pleased that Nigel did is he made it so public. And so now everyone has had the warning. Anyone can be a politically exposed person. You don't have to be in politics. You just have to not be liked by whoever is controlling the world. And so I just want you know share that warning with everyone. No, that's really important. I was just thinking that that's a message I need to I need to take you saying mm. that and put it out because it's it. And this is the other thing, isn't it? It's about um, messengers, the right messenger. So me just banging on about you know don't leave your stuff. I can sound like a conspiracy theorist. It can be ignored. Mm. But someone like you, who's sitting in the heart of your own business and other businesses and people come to for advice, you saying listen. Yeah. So for me, I'm like mm, I need that. I, so we have to choose our messengers really carefully. And at my kind of level, level, level as a kind of rabble rouser, I suppose, <laughs> uh, for me at a, a translating that, it's also the spending of cash. Mm. So we've had massive campaigns for, you know, cash is king, spend cash, use yes, cash. Thank God for those. And so that's really, and we've, and we, and I'm choosing to believe that the entire 7% seen in the uptick of uh, cash in the bank sector, 7%, that's our people. Mm. And the crowd will go crazy at that. And then we've just had 19% uptick um, in cash being used in the last, I think it's the last quarter, mm. which has been amazing. And the post office from June to August, the most can cash transactions in history on record. That's rebellion. That I is know, rebellion. I know, that and is, I so love cash it. Cash is freedom. Cash is freedom and that's rebellion and thank God because everyone fell for the, oh, well, you know, cash transmits the, just tap your Apple Pay. Oh, we don't need cash anymore. Don't fall for that shit. Good. Cash is freedom. Good. And I say to people say often, what can I do? What can I do? And one of the things you can do tomorrow is let's say you do 20 transactions in a day, try and do one of them with cash. Mm. And shop the next lo day, shop do locally, 20. support your small businesses, pay cash, cash tip with cash. Yes. Yeah, don't be lazy and rely on the... No, and also people tap. on the street, like homeless dudes, buskers, they're screwed with all of well, this. Well, they are. They need... They, they, I, I, I know my beggars in my city, because they're professional beggars. Um, and I, I always say, well, if you had a card machine, a tap, I could give you money, but cash. I'm not... Yeah. So we need to look after cash and spend cash. But I think your message is a much top level thing, and it's imp so important. But people's rebellion can be in tra cash transactions yeah. and demanding from businesses that they continue to accept cash. And now the bank is convening to see about putting in some sort of legislation about people having access to cash. So we can have resistance mm. and we can rebel in our own way. And uh, cash, I think, is part of that. 
100 percent and most people are not financially literate the only way they know to budget is go down the bank get 80 quid out this week and that's the budget for the week that's the, all they know how to do so much harder to budget when you just tap this tap that tap that all of a sudden you spend 150 instead of 80 because you can't budget what you can't see and i think the the thing about what you said about it is literally they turn it off so if i think of any of my banks or paypal or maybe i'm trying to think of accounts that your uh, listeners or viewers might have so let's say i had 25 grand in my paypal and uh, one day they just decided to turn it mm. off what i'll say about that is not only do you look at it and go but but and there is no but yeah but second is then your next thing is oh but i need to get help then there's no one to give you help that who are you going to ring? Who are you going to who who? Mm. What, are, you, are you going to go down the branch? There is no branch. No financial helpline. So what, when it's cut off, your natural instinct is, well, I'll sort that. You can't sort it. Just have an idea. Yeah. Can you make a note about financial helpline? You know, you get all these helplines, oh. like you know, obviously with the Samaritans. Why couldn't there be one for people's m money and finances? Imagine anyone at any time could phone a helpline and get free financial advice. Uh, meaningful financial advice. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, not not yeah. IFA financial advice no, you mean, and not system financial you advice. Mean I mean, I'm in the practical, shit. personal Here's financial my problem. advice. Yeah. That's a great idea. Mm. That's a strong shout. Yeah. Maybe we started something here, Katie, other yeah. than just rebellion. <laughs> What do you call them? You call them your rabble. My rabble, the rabble rousers, yeah. yeah. Because we are the ordinary. And there's many very, uh, very smart, articulate, talented, brilliant people, but we are the ordinary. Mm. And, um, and our numbers are growing at such speed. And I am, I, I'm so excited for what's coming. I'm so excited for the next, I hope I'm around longer now, because I, I really want to see what's coming. Ireland showed it the other day. If, Co if Conor McGregor runs uh, uh, to be president, my <laughs> life is pretty much freaking complete. I'm so excited for what's coming. Mm. And I, I want to, if, if I could have my, if I could ask for my last day, it would be to be at the, uh, the front surge of what's coming mm. um, because it's going to be glorious. And, um, and people won't have their freedoms taken for, for too much longer. Uh, and I feel it. I feel mm. it. There's an electricity about it that I just love. And the other really glorious thing is, um, you know, how strange it is that you and I are connected, for example. And that's true of this whole connection of all the people in our, the people that you know in your contacts. We are really connected. Mm. And it's, that's also very powerful. Yeah. Well, one of the things I love about doing this Disruptor show is I love meeting people that I may otherwise never would have yeah. met because we're in different worlds. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I met my progressive rock god through, basically, he's the king of progressive rock and I met him through the show and we've become friends and he's sent me an AI Christmas song that he's written. I'm just like, this is surreal. And then I remember watching you on The Apprentice because, you, know, I I, you know, that was when I started my business. I used to love watching The Apprentice. Yeah, back in the day. And, and, and here we are. And isn't that, isn't that great? Yes, which leads to this idea that I believe in, which is why I have this endless faith and have no fear, is that your path in life is already set. So we didn't know back then when you were watching The Apprentice or I was applying to be on The Apprentice for no mm. apparent reason whatsoever, that your path is already set and that the freer you are, the more you find it. Uh, and that's what I think is for many people is when you what makes you, sorry to interrupt. No, good to interrupt. But um, I've not had this existential question um, probably for 20 years about whether you're predetermined in life or whether you make your own life. As an entrepreneur, I find it hard to take that belief yes. that my destiny is set because, you know, you have the hustle you're, mentality you're hustle. and yeah. you build from so nothing. Hard. Yeah. And um, you sweat. Yeah. So are you saying I should work less hard no, and, no, no. No, and no, accept or, that my... No, no, no. So it's not a right, be a fat bastard and go on a cruise. It's not that. So you, you've, you've interpreted that. <laughs> I could that. never be that. You've interpreted that, well, I think we know you could. Um, you've interpreted that in a way that is the opposite of what I'm talking about. But you're, about. you're saying my path is already set. Yes. By who, how, where? So your path in life is already set. I don't know who sets it. Okay. I don't have all the answers. Well, but you're on my show, so you should have all the answers. Okay. Why I'll would I make want... some up if you like, right, but then. that would feel well, very no, you're giving me your, your... Yeah. yeah, so I believe, and I've come yeah. to this belief. Yeah. I didn't, have, I didn't like, go to some weird cult school and get indoctrinated. <laughs> but I, maybe I choose to believe it because my life has been so... I'm so sorry, Sam. 
Uh, maybe I choose just fiddle with my microphone. <laughs> Why don't I just give it a little bit more? Um, I this choose, is all going to stay in, by the way. I know, yeah. but I, that, I'm explaining things then. I was explaining yeah. that for the viewer so they, because they won't know that that was the mic. So actually, I was <laughs> like working with children. <laughs> um, so maybe I choose to believe it because my life has been so random that I'm trying to make sense of it, right? Mm. But I believe that your path is already set and the more that you endeavour, right, the more that you're bold, the more that you sweat from your nutsack to employ this person or buy that or hustle that deal, the more you find your path. So it's about maximum effort or right. maximum, so Tate, maximum strength, maximum Brit, Elon Musk, the advertisers, right? Maximum bravery, you find your path. But what it means, you can't have this stuff that will make you, the more you have stuff that makes you go, oh, but I couldn't do that because, but oh, that would upset. Oh, but I'm, you know, you have to let go of all that stuff. Like a, like a hot air balloon. You have to <coughs> cut off, that was me cutting the ropes, not just eating mice. <coughs> you have to cut off. You may want to work on your cutting sound. <coughs> what's, a, what's a good, <coughs> There you go. That's Is that better? better? Yeah. You've got to cut off ballast, the ballast, isn't mm. it? That weighs you down. Yeah. So like as a mum, you can use children as ballast every day of the week. I've got children, so I shouldn't. Mm. I've got children, so I mustn't. Mm -mm -mm. I, or, I can't. Yeah. I can't because I'd be letting my kids down. Oh, OK, maybe you would. Or maybe one day they'd think it was terrifically exciting that you got caught outside naked having sex in a field. I don't know, I'm just using an example. You know what I mean? Mm. Cut yourself free mm. and then you find your path. That's what I believe. Yeah, Hence I like you that. and me and Tate and Farage and Robinson and whomever else that anyone relies on, we all end up coming towards a similar place. Mm. Mm. See, all it's right. exciting. It is exciting. Now, I don't wanna, I feel like I should leverage that excitement but I want to talk about the death, <laughs> death of the UK now. So, oh, you absolute bastard. Yeah, I know. I'm just going to completely ruin it for you. But no, actually, this is, this is good for me because I will be honest, I've been pretty down about the state of the UK. Yes, I see that. I think the police, way underfunded, completely fucked, completely corrupt. It's really low conviction rate. I don't even know how much of it's their fault because if they were getting the funding and the resources, things would probably be better. You've got the NHS completely fucked. You basically pay for your healthcare twice because you have to get private because you can't get into the NHS. Um, you've got taxes which are outrageously high and any creativity and innovation and ability to build a business without friction, you know, which the economy is the big, engine of this country the taxes are far too high and i just feel like the the uk is dying what do you think about all of that and then leverage me with some of this optimism that yes. you seem to have because financially and sort of structurally within our main organizations like the police and the nhs and the government and the banks i can't fucking see it no i think it's fucked yes so agreed, 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 and I think you're completely right. And the old institutions, whatever that institution is, is dying and will die. So uh, the royal family. <laughs> I am I'm longer than you. I need to stretch. <laughs> you reminded me of my Labradors. It's <laughs> like when they're on the sofa. Ever, and they, ever, they, they, they crawl go, off. Yeah. yeah, they crawl off and then they do this really weird. Yeah, and then their back legs are still on the sofa, but yes. their front legs are on the floor. Yeah, or they'll do a real big stretch for yeah. a long time. Like, <laughs> just like, but they don't move. No. That's what you reminded me of just That's then. what I just did. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, did I put you off the question? No, I love it when you just do a bit of yoga All when right. you've asked me something. You're like, death of it, the death of UK, the death of... You've That's just got to be yourself, haven't you? Yes, darling, yeah. absolutely. You're, ro you're rocking it. You're yeah. rocking it. All old institutions will die off. So the church, uh, you know, I guess the notion of the flag mm. got killed off. Then the monarchy, institution, bank, NHS, the institution. Yeah. That died a long time ago. Just people pretended or tried to put a sticking plaster on it so they didn't notice. Mm. So all that stuff is gone. And you're completely right. That feels very um, doom and gloom and sad. And it is kind of a tragedy. Equally, um, things like the NHS could never continue past its heyday. 
because as you would appreciate from a business perspective, the modelling on it is just, yeah. I mean, beyond bonkers. We can't afford it. And that's been true for 20 years. Yeah. So it has to die off. But the very remarkable thing is that once you go further into uh, the rabble, um, that is already being seen as a life that doesn't actually impact nor impose massively on a very large community of people that no one's yet talking about. So up and down the UK, this is before we get to America, where it's even bigger, people are working out ways and means and mechanisms to live separate to all of that. And it's not some weird prepper rabbit hole and it's not some weird off-grid community. It's ways of organising, transacting, achieving power, food, resources, which comes exactly from what you were talking about earlier, buy local, use cash. It's basically an extension of that. So many of the events I go to are with communities that live or can live within range of each other, that have power that they generate themselves, have access to water sources, have their own medical people attached to those communities and are living, are preparing for that. Mm. There is an entire swathe of this country already building for when all of those institutions are gone or, or trying to live without needing them. Yeah. And so I'm super hopeful and super positive because I see that all over the place. South Africa, the same, America, mm. people in Florida, moving to states that they will create free states. The free state of Florida, Arizona. It's almost like a reversal, isn't it? Yeah. In, it feels like a, a de-evolution, yes. but it's not. because it's not. Because it is evolution, otherwise it wouldn't be happening. It's a refinement. Yeah, but going, almost reversing some of the globalism and yes. that we created. Because yeah. we, we went, uh, we were, so evolution, evolution, and we're going faster, and then, oh, look, we've got cars, and now we've got mm. Concord. But then remember what happened after Concord. Everything after Concord had to be slower, mm. less good, less fast, less driving, less, less. Yeah. So a parallel path has opened up and this mm. whole new way of being where we're refining life away from all of the illusion of democracy, the illusion of law and order. Mm. I mean, what have police been used for most recently? To crush rebellion. That's the use of the police now. It's only to crush rebellion, I think. I.e. not to convict rapists, no. and stop stabbings and no. theft in London. No, which allow just, that to carry yeah. on. It's allowed, it's permitted. It's just a few communities. It's the black, the poor black areas of London, people stab each other. It's been allowed to carry on. Wow. If someone wanted to stop it, it would have been stopped. Mm. No one to stop it. Same with the boats. No one wants to stop them, otherwise they'd be stopped. The things that are it's permitted mad. are this, permitted. It's so mad. It's, we live in mad times. <laughs> we do live in mad times. Which is a great thing, because this is the time to be alive. Well, it's our only time, isn't it? We've got to make the most well. of it. Oh, go on. <laughs> no, You're no, going to no. give me some afterlife no, theory. No, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> no, no, I believe when you, when you pop off, you pop off. But I also believe, um, I believe people are still with us when they've left. That's important. So, because I, I don't know about death, really, but I do know that I believe people stay with you. And, and that might be in memories or photos or smells or moments, but they mm. stay with you. Mm. So I always tell my children, um, I'll be in your pocket. You know, I said, if you ask my son now, where's your mum? He'd say, oh, well, she'd say she's in my pocket. So I tell them that because I've always felt like if your day does come, you want your kids to know that you're still in their pocket. Mm. Right. So I think it's like that. Mm. But yeah, no, I think this is time. I think you should be, I think you should be, your focus should be a getting the noises in your head to be quiet. You have to, you have to be the boss of them in the way that you're the boss of your business. And you have to be the one that says, no not doing that right now, I'm going to have a coffee, although you gave up coffee because you're a massive pervert. <laughs> and then uh, let yourself have pleasures in life, right? Yeah. Where are they in your life? What's your biggest pleasure? I'm not saying it on this show. Okay. Allow yourself more pleasure, right? The pursuit of happiness. Mm. Uh, you owe it to yourself to pursue happy. And then also, you know, you need to be... To, to find a, the determined positive in the same way that, what did you say you had when you were young? Naive Yeah, naive positivity. So you need to build determined yeah. positive. Because you've got loads of it. 
Yeah, thank you. I mean, I'm really excited about decentralization because being an entrepreneur is being able to build something meaningful and useful that other people want, that provides them a value or service that you get paid for to build a good free life without friction and intervention. That's mm. what it is. It's pretty much the constitution. Exactly. And of course, the governments have over interfered and created so much friction. And now with the decentralization of basically the rebellion against globalization. So, yeah, I know social media is suffocating, but also it's free in that if, if Twitter don't want me, I can go on Instagram. And if Instagram don't want me, I can go on YouTube. And if none of them want me, I can go on Rumble. So we have some decentralization there and we have you know, like you say, going back to these local self-sustaining oh, yes. communities. Yes, yes, yes. I love the concept of decentralization because for me, globalization is a suppression of your freedom and the, the rebellion against globalization is decentralization. Precisely. And like with cryptos yes. against money, for yes. example. Yes, and then in the rabble, a, a gathering of 250 people in the middle of the night who never ever told a single other person about the event but were able to know the event was happening in the same place and all be there mm. in an unlikely venue above an underwear shop in the middle of the night in Nantwich. That's, that is a ultimate manifestation of decentralization, right? Mm. Is those people can gather and feel better together with the sole purpose of knowing they're not on their own. Mm. So there's this really exciting time coming so you're excited for the next year then? Super excited. Where's my planner over there? Yeah. See all those blue dots? They're all stand-up gigs. So Ooh. April through till June, start of July, yeah. we'll be yeah. on tour across the UK. Wow. The Silly Cow Tour. Yeah. Katie Hopkins, Silly Cow. Is that is that actually what it's called? Yeah. Oh, right. So can people book now? Yeah. And it's called the Silly Cow Tour? Yeah. Right. Because some people that hate me, or think they did, or used to, whatever, be like Hopkins, oh, the silly cow. So I called the tour that. Right. I'll see what you did there. <laughs> so so are, you, are you an activist? Huh? Are you an activist? Ooh, no. What? no. No, I hate that word. Because that always reminds me of very privileged boarding school kids called Phoebe mm. with purple hair who stick themselves to the tarmac by their nipple hair. I'm not one of them. Right. I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm out there with the ordinary people fighting the good fight always have been 20 years mm. so it's really this is just uh i feel very lucky to be around now because mm. it could have i could have been offed or not been around to see this bit yeah so i feel like we've all been running with the baton for a long time and now we're really making some headway mm. so so i would like to see you more feeling more i would like you to genuinely believe we're headed towards really great things yeah i think we are but I think it had to get bad, that has bad. To. Has and to. unfortunately you have to go through that. You have to. Yeah. It's like, for me, it feels like my relationship with the UK, it's like I'm, it's like I'm divorcing myself from yes. the UK and I'm going yes. through the pain of that. Yes. But there's so many exciting things yes. as what was breaks. And then all of a sudden you see what could be, what could have been, and you see opportunity. Exactly. And then you can have the confidence. Or, you know, you always have confidence in yourself. So not like, oh, I'm so great, I'm so this, I'm so mm. that, but more, I, here I am still. Yeah. I've been through this, 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 here I am still. Oh, here I am still, come on then. Mm. And that's true of the people around you, they're still going. And um, so you can have confidence in that. Mm. So yeah, it is exciting. I mean, there's a lot of terrible things and a lot of people are really, really, really struggling. Mm. And that's, that bit is horrible. And like, oh, we're just doubling the cost of this. Where the hell are people supposed, people on a, on a limited or constrained budget or with fine, where the hell are they supposed to find that? Mm. And this doubling is done in the knowledge that they can't find it. Removing a health service and people not be able to afford private, it is done in the knowledge they can't access private healthcare, right? You know, this is the heartbreak of the ordinary, is the smalling of people the crushing of people actually physically means you're going to crush them. Yeah, that is sad. And I think that's entrepreneurship is the solution and the freedom to that, i.e. that thing you've always loved and you've always wanted to do that you haven't had the courage to do or you think you couldn't do because you've got kids and mortgages and everything else. Surely now is the time to fucking try it. Mm. 
if there's a bigger frickin' explosion anyway, surely now is the time to turn your passion into your profession. Uh, exactly, exactly. And there's an urgency, there's an urgency for other people to open up those opportunities. Mm. And there's an urgency now, and I, and I really like very much the way it's forcing people to think, do I need the house? I can't afford the mortgage, I can't afford where it's going. Maybe we just sell the house. And, and I appreciate the rental market is horrid, but people moving out into vans and vehicles and caravans and, you know, the, there, is a, there is a gloriousness about the freeing of that. Mm. Mortgages were one of the ways of control. Of course. And freeing yourself Pledge from until that. death. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe not now. Yeah. Maybe not. And maybe the way you're freer is by joining one of these communities. I'm not, I'm not advocating it for everyone out. I know people love their homes. Mm. British people particularly, we grew up imagining that the own value of a home. life was to own your own yeah. home. But maybe that was a, a bit of an illusion now too. Mm. But yeah, there is an urgency and there is not all of my kind of, it's exciting for many, many people. It is not exciting. No. And they are being crushed and, and killed with a thousand cuts. Mm. And, I, and, I, and that makes me angry angry because they deserve much more mm. and much better mm. yes amen final question for the review and that is ai was big <gasps> in the year just gone chatbot yeah i mean ai everything ai songs i mean there's this big thing isn't there in the film music Actors. industry um, but you said to me before we went live that you know how to cheat ai the ai <laughs> algorithm i want to hear about this but i'm going to give away my cheat so, well, don't worry, we only have 100 billion viewers and listeners. Hardly any. Yeah. You're not even known. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's rubbish. Uh, why am I bothering talking to you? Well, maybe the bigger ones won't have you on their show. <laughs> I'm probably the biggest that will have you on the show. Oh, I said <laughs> So, um... How have you hacked AI? Well, the trick is... So, now I do stand-up. And I was never really uh, obviously a stand-up and no one people say well you're not funny well no no I get it right you can either find me funny or you don't it's gonna be a, like a binary thing but the trick is I've not changed any of the things I've thought or said really substantially over time 20 years but when I used to say them I was banned from everything banned from this that the other banned from my home lost everything but when you apply comedy you can say stuff you couldn't otherwise say. So I've just done a video and it basically says, don't be getting your because there's some weird stuff going on with heart attacks. You can't say that. But if you're funny and you're an old lady and you're making a joke about things and you're obviously dicking about, you can. But people that know you know the serious message, they know what you're doing, or at least they laugh along with you, but get the point and it works. And AI and the algorithm doesn't know what to do with you. And so I am now able to do content. I'm able to be booked in theatres. I'm able, I mean, I get cancelled a lot, but that, that's part of the taking the punches. My content is pretty consistent, but I have applied a guise of being funny and it's allowed me to do what I do. Because AI, it turns out, does not yet have the advanced personality to be able to do humour, particularly not dry humour. It is basically a German or a Canadian, so utterly devoid of personality. <laughs> and I'm assuming that somewhere in Silicon Valley, there's a bunch of German Canadians who were working on AI. They never had sex in their lives. They never found anything funny. And they developed AI on that basis. It can't do funny. It can't get a gag and it can't tell a gag. And so it can't censor a gag. And so it can't censor me. So Katie Hopkins has officially hacked AI and in hacked the, the algorithms. In the time of the kings, the only person that could speak truth to power was the jester. Huh? Mm. Uh, uh, uh. Just saying. And that is the perfect way to end the review of the year. Good review of the year. Great review. Well, thank you for the idea. Katie, Elon Musk, the rebel. <gasps> Yeah, I know this turned you on quite a bit. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. So um, he's taken over Twitter, turned it to X, um, brought in a new revenue model because he says he needs to save the company. And the advertisers are all pulling away because they don't want to be associated with 
far right content. And then in a room full of very well established business people, he said, don't blackmail me, go fuck yourself. Did you hear what I said? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh, golly. Let's talk <laughs> about that. Just so exciting and so exciting at so many levels. A, because the guy interviewing him uh, was trying to, you could see, trying to protect Elon and, and even trying to say, oh, but you see your business model does require these people, doesn't it, Elon? <laughs> and Elon was like, mm, fuck them. And the guy, you guy mm. he was trying to help him as a friend and Elon was having none of it. So he was like, I'm done with these people. I mean, he even went, fuck you. Uh, or no, he, he Bob, said, are you here, Bob? Bob as in Disney. head of Disney. So he even oh, called out. Called him out yeah. by, by name. A guy, can you imagine the head of Disney, how, how his life is? Yeah. Like only minions. Yes, Bob. No, Bob. Oh, blow me, Bob. Oh, no, no. And he just goes, Bob, I hope you're listening. Mm. Fuck you. Like, Bob <laughs> would never have known that in his life. Not for 20 mm. years, 40 years will Bob have known that. And Elon called it on a stage. But that's so risky, oh, isn't it? It was so... But maybe that's... Maybe that's him. Or is that why everyone loves him? Yes, mm. living his life on the high wire between ultimate disaster and ultimate failure and ultimate triumph mm. you know spaceships rockets that launch themselves and come back to earth again and just disintegrate into the stars according to plan by elon of course all planned because he knows what he's doing i loved it he's got the woman in the room that he employed to be ceo of the organization to sell advertising she sat in the seats she's briefed elon on what she wants him to say and he sits on the stage and goes Go fuck yourself. Wow. Like just, I was like, it's the hottest thing I ever saw. It's so masculine. Like it's beyond masculine. You know, there's Andrew Tate, masculinity. You have a certain masculinity, but we don't want to talk about it. So we don't want to, you know, blow smoke up your ass. Uh, Elon Musk that day, so masculine. Like I would blow down at the altar <laughs> of Elon Musk <laughs> any day. It's not a require. He's not ever asked for that. And I don't know that I would be particularly his cup of tea. Should we put the, this out as a campaign? Yeah, say, so look, listen, we know us. a slight transsexual looking horse faced old bag from the UK. She is offering to blow you, Elon. What do you say? Just try it. Yeah. If you know, if you have people we'll that tweet know, that. tweet it, let Elon know that I am totally willing to blow him any day of the week. No charge. Right. I think that's a bargain, mostly just because of his masculine thing. It was mm. just, mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, but away from the sexual side of things, also just really, really restorative when, if you know the power of the advertisers, you know, so at LBC where I used to have a show, the way people got rid of me from that radio show was to go to the advertisers and get the advertisers to pull. Mm. So knowing someone just says, you aren't going to bribe me, yeah. after all the years of all of us being cancelled at the behest of advertisers, just so not, it just felt like you had a felt like you had a spokesperson all of a sudden, mm. or a fighter in your corner. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's too much control from these big advertisers, isn't too, it? Yeah, well, yeah. The, the control mechanism of advertising mm. and the control mechanism of the powerful and the, contro and the control mechanism of the board of deputies or the Muslim council or the Catholic churches, doesn't matter what religion, all of those control mechanisms are all the things that are the shackles that we try and shake off. So it just felt like he, it was like the releasing of chains. Mm. It was exceptional. Mm.